That's design for 50% of the designers. And the rest is details. The rest is embroidery on the basic concept. And the student thinks it's new, but I've got it in my case memory, which allows me to be the teacher and credit. The second approach is sequential. In this approach, you don't see it whole, but you see the pieces and the choices that you have to make. And you believe that you can link them in a design. Uh, this is a 35-year-old project. It's the first time that, that I caused students, maybe invented, a, a design Delphi method. This is Bermuda. That's the garbage dump. The prime minister, who was the first black man to be elected prime minister in, this, in about 75, 1975, grew up next to the dump. That's the dump. That's the floodplain that has to accommodate a 100-year flood, and that's the Central Park, and that's the Governor General's house, the, re the residence of the Queen's representative, also looking over the dump. And he ran on the pro promise of close the dump. That was his campaign, and he got elected. I took my graduate students to there, and we talked to the people. First time that's ever happened in Bermuda. And every night, I made them do a diagram of every idea that they got and every idea that they had themselves to scale. Tiny little diagrams, 8.5 by 11, on plastic. <clears throat> and by the time we were done, we decided that there were five things that every design had to have. It had to be on stable soils. It had to have 3.5 million cubic feet of garbage placed on it before the dump could be closed while they built an incinerator. So you were grading with a dump. It had to uh, protect the flood, etc. And we had about 100 diagrams. And I used the Delphi method to ask them which issues are most important. And they ended up with socio socioeconomic open space, the marsh, on-site circulation, development around it, etc. In other words, this is more important than this, than this, than this, than this. And then I asked them of the diagrams that they got from the people or that they made themselves, which were the most likely to succeed. And these are more likely to succeed than those. Duh. This is not a good machine. Than those. In other words, that diagram is the flexible, the most important diagram of the most important policy to put in your design. And then I ran a lottery. And the student who won the lottery, Ron over here, had his first choice of any five or six diagrams for his design. And being smart, he picks this, 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 and this, obviously. And then Karen here, she can do whatever she wants except if it's already been picked. And Karen says, I'm going to do this one and then these two and then maybe that one. And I had 15 students. And each one had to do a design in four weeks to the same graphic representation. Right? So these are all different designs because they have different diagrams. And the students are smart and they're abductively designing. And in four weeks, we had 15 of these things, and they were all boxed. And they were all flown with four students to Bermuda. And every design was put on the table, and the committee that was in charge of the dump evaluated them. And they said no to 12 of the designs and three to carry forward. So the 12 students whose projects were stopped, their work stopped. And they had to join the students whose work went forward. And there were some very famous architects whose work got stopped. So these were the three finalists. Team A, which as you see has roads going right through it. Team B, famous landscape architect from Minnesota. A flat design, flat on an unstable soil, by the way, based on garbage. And the third one, no road. These are different. And these were presented to 10,000 people in five meetings. That's a tenth of the population of Bermuda. And that's the prime minister and his wife and the Prime Minister decided to have a referendum, not by iPhone, but on paper. All right? And this design won. This design won. And two of my students decided to marry and stay. And they were given rent-free a house for one month, for a year, and made a design. And that design is now graded out, because it took 20 years to stabilize the soil. And what was the design? That was the design. Is it chance? I don't know. But it's been a robust method. It is abductive logic. Okay. 
The third approach is combinatorial. In this approach, you know that you've got very, very important decisions. There's a Pareto distribution of decisions. A design might have 20 to 30 decisions, maybe 20 to 40 decisions that a person has to make before they let go and let somebody else operate at another scale. And there is a Pareto distribution. Some things are more important than other things. The highway really is more important than what species of tree you plant, mostly. So what's really the, the technique here is to study the combinations, and not too many, of the top three or so factors. And it's really important to try to capture the major generating assumptions and then let go and not worry about it too much. Don't try to make a finished design, but do make sure that you're on the right track. This is the designer. And if the designer makes the wrong move in the beginning, that's the end of the story. If they make a wrong move just before the end, it's not exactly the end of the story. This is a workshop that uh, Christina Van Haren, who spoke yesterday, and Juan Carlos, uh, Tess, and, um, uh, uh, and I worked on. This was a workshop looking at the future of, the, of Cagliari, the capital city of Sardinia. And the students in this, we had basically a week. I had them for 24 hours. Um, basically, the students were engineers, architects, urban designers, landscape architects, uh, half Italian, Moroccan, half German, God knows from where, in English. Cagliari is a city of about 400,000. It's sprawling. It's a Roman city. Uh, the data don't exist. This is the land use data. That's their GIS for land use. We designed based on, tw on 10 evaluation models, habitat, visual, cultural, energy, transport, hydrology, nothing obscure about that. I had this, we had the students in half a day evaluate each of these systems in a very simple map, all graphically, no computers at all. This was last year. We said, if you draw it in red, it's a problem. If you draw it in green, it's something you want to protect. Very, very simple. Don't waste time. Go right to it. And you have to propose projects that will help you. So these diagrams, for example, are color-coded as projects alternatives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for improving habitat. These are potential projects for importing transport. And they were... 150 projects, color-coded for different sectors of growing a metropolitan area. This is on day one, eight hours. All right? Then we divided it into six stakeholder groups. Conservationists, developers, regional planners, an energy foundation, tourism development, and local government that wants to be reelected. And we told the students they could take no more than 20 projects, the best 20 projects that would help them for their client. And so they go to the table, they borrow the plastic, they put it on an overhead projector or on a light table, and they end up, come on, and they end up with a design. And we're slowly taking the diagrams that are more frequent and putting them into the computer. Juan Carlos organized that. And we went through a stage, this is... These are the teams. Those are their designs. They are sharing plastic. So if this was all digital, and we've done it all digital many times, you basically share a file of a diagram of a project. Why not? But between these stages, we evaluated them. How? By asking the students who did the first analysis to compare every design. 